All right guys, Nick with another buster coming at you again this week on a deer fly infested summer day. Uh, talk about something that I'm a big believer in, which is streamlining your saddle setup. Um, Y'all guys know that I'm a real big lightweight freak, um, but even more than weight reduction, I'm always looking at bulk reduction. So, you know, think back to back in the bad old days, carrying, you know, a, a big summit, or even like a lone wolf hand climber on my shoulders, it stuck out, it come up, you went to duck under a limb, you were getting cables caught, you were walking down a real tight trail, you were catching limbs on the sides of stuff. Um, and then even, you know, as I started to shrink my saddle setup, you had full length lone wolf sticks, same thing they'd stick up over the top of you. Um, you know, if you're carrying a rifle on a pack, a big long, you know, full frame rifle, um, that's getting caught on stuff, big long bows. So. Really, with the exception of bows, and I do still prefer a longer bow, um, rifles, gear, um, everything, kayaks. I just bought a mountain bike, and I'm looking at, you know, figuring out how to keep it as simple and as streamlined as possible because a lot of times that makes a bigger difference than actual physical weight. Pretty much any saddle setup up out there is going to be light enough that any relatively healthy individual should be able to carry it through the woods for miles and miles and miles. But what's going to get you is since whitetails like to live in thick terrain, at some point you're going to end up in, you know, privet thickets or palmetto flats or, you know, growed up clear cuts and stuff like that. Young, young planted pines, you know, that ain't eight foot up off the ground and it's like walking through Christmas trees. Uh, you know, having to duck and having to crawl on your elbows through cover, a streamlined system is going to help you out. So two things um, that I've done here in the past couple of weeks that I think is really going to help streamline my setup for next season. Uh, one, I don't know if you can see on this tree kind of at the bottom, those three red marks. Um, I'm playing around with, in some cases, instead of using squirrel steps, I think this year I'm just going to be using three uh, shrink wrapped grade 8 bolts. Just heat shrink tubing to keep them quiet. Uh, the reason I'm not using carbon is because standing on it for prolonged periods and potentially putting a load at the very tips of it, putting that side load leaning out from around the tree to maneuver around it, just don't think that's a very good application. I think I'm going to end up breaking some bolts that way. I like doing, I'm climbing with bolts, carbon bolts. I like to keep my weight all the way against the tree and I'm just lightly stepping on it. So, I'm going with steel. Uh, I'm doing three of them. You can see I've got one in the center here. I've got two kind of around the sides, equidistant to bark. Um, on a smaller tree, you would have the two on the side kind of 180 degrees from each other. Here, you're just covering a little bit over a third of the tree. Uh, but I can get a full range of motion, I'll show you in a second, around the tree with just those three bolts. And I'm actually only having to drill, say I go nine bolts high with my carbon bolts, my tenth bolt I can place is steel. That gets me a 20 foot, and then I put two other bolts on it on either side. And that lets me, you know, have the two on the side to rest my feet on in a normal resting position. And it gives me the one in the middle that I can use to maneuver. And uh, it basically limits my maneuverability to that of a platform hunter. But it's way lighter. I mean, just the weight of three grade eight bolts. Um, I can pick anywhere around the tree that I want to put those. And... Uh, it's, for me, it's more comfortable because I can spread my feet uh, versus the platform. You have to keep them close together the whole time. Just for me personally, that's more comfortable. The other thing that I've done, and, other, and these are small changes. I'm always kind of tweaking, trying to figure out a way to make things lighter, simpler, more streamlined. Uh, the other one is actually a gem of an ideal, gem of an idea uh, that Saddle Hunter Forum user Guana, Guana, Guana. I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation. Uh, Anyway, he posted a while back saying that he had accidentally put his saddle on and threaded the waist belt through the bridge loops. And I was like, oh my gosh, uh, why did I never think of that? Because usually, I'll show you when you walk through, a, through the woods with your saddle on, if you're not, usually what I've done in the past is I've just tucked my bridge down the front of it. Um, and that kind of brings the side loops in. Adjust my camera angle. We're high speed, super professional. Um, 
So you can see your loops stay out to the side. All right, if you got a bridge, a fixed bridge connecting it, when you go to tuck it into the middle behind your buckle, it brings them together and it stays nice and streamlined. Um, but doing away with it, now I'm using a one-piece bridge and tether system. And I showed you guys in, I think, my last video. You can see, that's bridge, tether, and everything. But doing that, walking around, scouting, wearing my saddle as a lineman to prep some trees, I noticed that you got them loops that just kind of hang. And I had thought about maybe putting like a, a hook and an elastic band or something, trying to put it on there, just to kind of bungee them and keep them tight. But then, one of the nifty saddlehunter.com fellows came up with this idea. You just tuck them in. And that keeps everything, you see, nice and snug to you. That's not going to get hung up on anything. Uh, the other loops, you can actually see my um, lineman's loops. They actually, instead of sticking out the side, they always stay pulled back. Because I keep my lineman's daisy chain. Um, and I think Boswell has a video, I think he daisy chains his like this. So it's hanging off to one side. The problem with that is you've got that big loop hanging off the side. It doesn't weigh anything, um, but it's just bulk. It's just something to catch on thick brush. So all that I do is come across to my other side, clip it, and then that keeps it hugged against the side. Um, and then y'all have already seen, you know, that trophy line pouch is just welded inside, um, and it has plenty of room to carry all the gear I need versus some guys are using you know, a, a more traditional dump pouch, uh, and they're kind of putting one on each hip, and I've noticed that kind of gives you a little bit of a, a little bit of a spread off to the sides. I'm going to step up, we're going to kind of show you how you can just use those three bolts, and I think I've done a similar video on this before, showing how to maneuver around the tree with the squirrel steps. Um, this is very similar. You're just losing those bolts on the back side of the tree. You have to get better about trusting your weight and using that middle bolt and pivoting with your knees to get a full range of motion. All right, so here you can see I'm resting on my bolts. This would be my normal setup position. And this is pretty comfortable. Uh, you know, got my feet nice and spread out knees to the tree. Anything from straight behind me, or really back to around my five o'clock, I can comfortably shoot from those two bolts all the way to my 12 o'clock. That's very easy. Uh, 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, pretty simple just to come up and over. And just trust the full weight, you know, of your body to that bolt and pivot. But I've also got that middle step so I can come around like that. That works pretty well, uh, very quiet. I might end up going with a longer, like a seven inch straight edge steel bolt, just give myself a little extra wiggle room um, and keep my feet off of that bark. Because what's nice about this, with those grade eight bolts in the tree and they're threaded, uh, they're locked into that tree, they're not going anywhere. So you get zero, I mean, zero noise from your platform. Squirrel steps, I've never got any bad noise out of them. I've just got some bark noises, um, you know, they'll, they might settle a little bit. That's not really an issue that I have. I don't suffer like some guys do from the steps gradually walking down the tree over time because my buckle's not tight. Uh, I've done a video on that if you want to check it out. Um, and then with a the platform, you can always have that platform pop and trees or shift if you don't get it set just right, or at least that's my experience with them. These grade 8 bolts, they're not, they're not going anywhere. Um, very comfortable. You've always got that middle step that you can use to pivot. You need to get a little further range of motion. And then you can side load like that. 
and you can really get all the wear on the tree. You can put a tremendous amount of side pressure uh, compared to a platform. There's, there's no such thing as too much side pressure or, you know, on, on some platforms they just got little nubs. Uh, they're supposed to help provide you traction. The Predator platform, the wings on it, I never personally thought they were that functional, uh, especially compared to a bolt like that. There's, there's no such thing as too much side pressure. That's it for this week's video. Uh, sorry it got to you a couple of days late. I was busy this weekend playing around with some new toys with the help some of the folks on Saddle Hunter. I actually ended up picking up a brand spanking new to me uh, mountain bike. I've been busy trying to read up, learn about them, figure out how to take the wheels off and adjust the derailleurs and clean them and lube them and maintain them. And uh, it's going to be something else that I'm really looking forward to this year. And hopefully over the summer we'll kind of do a little uh, little video series, maybe do a couple of videos about you know, uh, why I chose the type bike that I did and, you know, stuff that you need to know how to fix as a hunter when you're getting way back there off the beaten path, how to, you know, fix stuff and keep your repair gear super lightweight so it's not taking up real estate that your hunting gear is supposed to do. And maybe we can get a video, uh, maybe we can do a bike hunt and go kill us a pig or a deer or duck or something. Maybe we can start killing stuff. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to start the killing videos. All this goofing around on the tree, this is well and dandy, but I'd much rather be out in the woods. So, uh, until next weekend, y'all take care.